we will be looking at the application of L'Hopital rule to finding the limits of functions. We need to find the right hand limit of function x, logarithm of x. Separately, when x goes to 0, x of course goes to 0. But, when, but the logarithm of x goes to minus infinity. And so our limit is of the type 0 times infinity. And we cannot solve this uh, limit directly. We need to rewrite it a bit. We will write it as a limit x goes to 0 from the right, logarithm of x over 1 over x. And so now when x goes to 0, logarithm of x goes to minus infinity and 1 over x goes to infinity. So it's the limit of the type infinity over infinity. And we do know how to work with these limits. Uh, for this example, ex uh, explicitly we will use the L'Hopital rule. We said f of x is logarithm of x and h of x is 1 over x. These functions are continuously differentiable when x is uh, not equal to 0. So we can take the limit, the right hand limit again, 0 goes from the right, of f prime of x over h prime of x. And look what is uh, this e uh, limit equals to. So it's limit when x goes to 0 from the right, f prime of x, we just take the derivative of logarithm of x, it's 1 over x. Now h prime of x is derivative of 1 over x, it is one minus 1 over x squared. And this is equal to the limit x goes to 0 from the right of minus x. And so this limit of course exists and it equals to zero. So, and now we can apply the L'Hopital rule. So, by the L'Hopital rule, our original limit, logarithm of x over one over x, is equal to the limit of derivatives. So it is f prime of x over h prime of x. And we found this limit is just zero. So, this is what our limit equals to. And now part B. In part B we need to find a bit different limit. It again the limit when x goes to 0 from the right, but now x squared logarithm of x. And of course this limit we can write as so x times x logarithm of x. Now, x logarithm of x by the first part goes to 0 and x also goes to 0 when x goes to 0. So, because these limits exist and both are finite, we can divide it into two parts. So, the limit when x goes to the right, x times the limit x goes to the right, x logarithm of x. So, we have 0 times 0, which is, of course, just 0. So, in the third part of this question, we need to find all possible values of the constants a and b, such that our function f of x, which is the split function, is differentiable at if x equals to 0. So, we will be looking firstly on our function. f of x is just x squared logarithm of x when x is strictly positive and the ax plus b when x is less than or equal to 0. And we need to find of the values a and b when our function is differentiable at 0. But first of all, for the function to be differentiable at some point, it should be continuous. And we will find firstly the values of a and b, if possible, such that the function f is continuous at if x equals to 0. So for the function to be continuous, we need that the limit when x goes from the right, f of x should be equal to the limit when x goes from the left to 0, f of x, and should be equal to the value of our function at the point 0. So, the first limit is just the limit, x goes to 0 from the right, x squared 
logarithm of x. From the part b, we do know that it's just 0. The second limit. So when x is negative, when x is negative, our function is given by a x plus b. And so when x goes to 0, it's just b. And this is the same as the value of our function at 0. So these two should be equal. And therefore, we imply that b has to be equal to 0, otherwise our function is not even continuous at 0. Of course, it couldn't be differentiable then at 0. So b has to be equal to 0. To find that when our function is differentiable at x equals to 0, okay, now we'll be looking at the different limits. So we will be looking at the limit when h goes to 0 from the right, f of h minus f of 0 over h. This limit should be equal to the limit when h goes to 0 from the left, f of h minus f of 0 over h. So it's just the definition of our derivative. So these limits should exist and should equal. Take the first the limit. It is the limit when h goes to 0 from the right. f of h. h now is positive, so it is x squared logarithm of x. So it's h squared logarithm of h. f of 0 is 0. And now divided by h. So it's just the limit when h goes to 0 from the right. h logarithm of h. And from the part a, we know that this limit is equal to 0. We will now find the second limit. The limit when h goes to 0 from the left, f of h minus f of 0 over h. So f of h, h now is negative, so it's just a h minus f of 0 is just 0, and divided by h. So it's just the limit h goes to 0 from the left, a, which is, of course, just a. And these two limits should equal. Therefore, we imply that a should be equal to 0. So our function is differentiable at x equals to 0 only when both a and b are equal to 0. So otherwise it's just either not, not differentiable or even not continuous. Continue.